Robin, are you ready? Right. All right, Mike. I'll call to order the special meeting of the Willington Board of Selectmen. Tonight is August 18th, 2020 um, at 6.30 p.m. I will, uh, I'll start uh, and just take a moment. We apologize for the need to reschedule from last night to tonight. We posted um, the agenda through our town uh, website and it never actually posted. And we discovered that yesterday. Um, we knew that we couldn't properly um, hold the meeting. It hadn't been worn. So um, that's why it's tonight. The agenda remained the same, um, but it has to be a special meeting. So we cannot add to the agenda. All right, with that, the uh, next item of business is approval of minutes. As you recall, last um, meeting, we were missing the July 15th minutes. So Robin has sent those um, to both of you. I will make a motion to approve the July 15th, 2020 minutes as presented. I'll second. Any discussion? All right, motion made, seconded by uh, Selectman Blessington. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, and our last regular meeting was Monday, August 3rd, 2020. Um, these were slightly delayed because of a storm. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes of August 3rd as written. I'll second. Any discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Motion carries unanimously. The next item is present to speak. If you uh, would like to speak, I ask you to state your name for the record and we ask you to limit your comments to two minutes. Is there anyone present to speak? You can unmute yourself. Uh, Mike, they can unmute themselves, correct? Yeah, and it doesn't look like anybody's participating by phone. Okay, so you can unmute yourself or you can use the participants tab at the bottom of your screen and the raise hand tab that will come up on the right hand side. You do not have to be on camera. You can simply um, speak without being seen. All right, um, seeing no takers, there'll be an opportunity to be um, heard at the end of the meeting as well. I'll move on to correspondence. There was uh, just a couple of correspondence in our office. Um, the letter of intent to retire from the town clerk, um, the updated abatement request from Wellington Hill Fire Department, and then a letter from a group of concerned citizens sent to the selectmen and the library board of directors. Um, I will um, tell you that the, mat, uh, the majority of the matter mentioned in that letter was uh, taken up by the library board on Friday evening. I attended their meeting and um, they are looking at uh, legal action from here. So um, I, I'm sure. I would yes, like, John? if I may, I would like to uh, say that the people who signed this letter had they known it was going to be discussed at the library board meeting, might have attended the library board meeting and feel a lot better about it instead of having that uh, discussed at the library board meeting as an addition to the agenda. So I will tell you, I believe the intent was not to hide the discussion, but that the information was gathered mostly by the acting directors and they were presented it in their report um, and the chair anticipated that sort of be discussed which is why once they started discussing, I actually made the motion to put it on the agenda so they could have a meaningful discussion and some potential action. Um, while I might agree with you, John, we don't have say over their agenda um, and the information was shared in um, communications of the letter they received and in the director's report of the specific concerns that they have found and have come to the attention of the library board. Um, the majority of the library board was hearing some of this information for the first time. Um, and so I, I, I think they are taking the concerns seriously. There were um, certainly many things in this letter. One of them is that nobody cared. Um, I couldn't disagree more. Um, th there needs to be information gathering and that was being done and that was being done in the proper method. If the library board um, took no action, I think we then as a board could look at it otherwise um, the, the issues need to start there. And I do believe they're going to proceed with um, some legal action, at which point um, I'm sure we'll be directed not to speak about, a, about pending litigation. 
Right, and those correspondence are all available here in the selectman's office. First, uh, anything else under correspondence? Okay. Um, first selectman's report. Um, I was hoping to tell you that we had started work on the fuel tank replacement. The storm has pushed back uh, many different things. It certainly took a lot of time and one of them was um, Crop um, Environmental, who was our uh, vendor. Their ability to begin on time um, was delayed by the timing of the storm and the delays that they had. So they're um, telling us now that they should be starting on Monday um, and that it should be, uh, they should be able to complete it faster than we had hoped. That's actually good for us because we'll be able to utilize fuel that is in um, the tank as opposed to having to pay them to pump it out of there. So there's an, you know, the ability for us to save a little bit more. We had to obtain more fuel than we would normally um, because of the storm. We wanted to make sure we had enough, not knowing um, how much fuel, excuse me, our public works um, or EMS trucks would be on the road during the storm. And they were out there quite a bit. So we had to get small delivery of fuel. The town clerk position, um, while we originally had that to close on Thursday, on uh, Thursday when I spoke um, with um, town clerk, uh, who's head of the town clerks association uh, in our area, alerted me um, that the position wasn't shared through their, um, the town clerk community as we typically share all of our postings uh, of our professional manner. So we extended it one week um, through this Friday. So we'll end at 2 p.m. on this Friday. Um, and we do have several um, applications currently. And um, I know both of you had said you would sit on the panel as well as um, two other town clerks, one from Tallinn and one from Stafford. All right, uh, tax collection. Um, I have good news for you. So according to our tax collector, Janice, we are actually um, we are a bit ahead of where we typically are at this time of year in collections. Um, that's good news to hear. I know we weren't sure where we would be. I want to um, read you some of the facts to date. We've collected six million five hundred and thirty-one thousand five hundred, roughly, of our thirteen point three million dollar budget. So, the estimated First installment is about 7367 So although it's less than that first installment, it's ahead of where we typically are at this point in the collection cycle. So um, that's good news. We um, received 47% of the uh, real estate, 56% of personal property, and 60% of motor vehicles. So I know we were all concerned. We didn't know what um, with the economy, with layoffs, with moving um, the deferment to October would mean we are in um, good shape there. Steep grant. The steep program was renewed, um, but it was for smaller projects. They were looking specifically, our priority would go to things that were COVID related. We were hoping um, to be able to submit one of our big road projects, Village Hill or Schofield Road. The total amount that um, you can apply for is $128,205. So significantly less than either of those projects. So um, I will be working to submit by next Friday, the 28th, um, funding for the septic and painting and window uh, reglazing at the old town hall. Those are projects that we had in CIP and the septic until we cut it um, because of COVID um, changes to our budget was in the CIP plan. So um, if we can get this funding, that certainly frees up some local funding for other items. So Troy and I are working uh, with Carl um, to get that application submitted. All right, that's all I have for my update. Troy and Public Works, you have a Public Works update? Yep. All right. Um, Roadside mowing is still going on around town. We're still picking the trash up at the park. We're actually doing it twice a week now instead of once a week. Um, we pretty much cleaned up all the roads from the storm. Uh, there still might be a couple spots that resource is still going around and taking some rooms off some wires and stuff. So there is a spot out there that we haven't noticed. We'll get to it. 
Uh, we borrowed a bucket truck from Putnam yesterday and uh, we fixed the fence in the back of that park. That netting came down, so we were able to do that. Uh, we removed the tree at Center School that fell on the playscape. Uh, and then uh, Linden Tree has been around town for the last week removing hangers out of the trees and they've also been taking down some hazardous trees. And that's about it. The fuel tank, we kind of gave a explanation. I'm sorry, I stole your thunder. Other than that, and then um, one quick thing is uh, on September 26th, 27th, and the 30th, we're going to actually give the new stickers out at the transfer station. Um, so if everybody can have their registration when they come up there, we'll give you a new sticker. You can put on your windshield and carry on from there. Um, so there'll be a little delays during that time, but some of the guys from Public Works will be up there helping Matt and Joe. I think, so. I think it's been two years since we did yeah. new stickers. Yep. So. I'm sure uh, you'll draft a public notice and we'll get that sent out prior to. Yeah, that's Any it. questions for Troy and Public Works? All right. On to new business. Um, item one is uh, naming a water, a municipal water coordinator, part of um, CROG's Homeland Security grant. Um, requested they identify a name title uh, and municipality contact information for municipal um, water coordinators. The discussion of that takes um, in the state drought preparedness and response plan. It talks about a coordinator, um, if that's someone other than the CEO or EMD. So I uh, would like to move to appoint Troy Spazato, Public Works Director as the Municipal Water Coordinator for the Town of Willington in accordance with the CROG 2020 Homeland Security Grant Program, HSGP, who will serve as a point of contract, contact to OPM, the Office of Policy and Management, and DPH, the Department of Health. I'll second. All right, discussion. Uh, this information is not due until June 30th of 2021. So look at us way ahead of the game. <laughs> did you ask Troy's permission before you put his name in that session? Sure did. <laughs> <laughs> that ball and told. Is that how that's checking? <laughs> checking. <laughs> all right. Any other discussion? All right. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Look at that, Troy. Look at that. Congratulations. <laughs> He's going to log off this meeting before he gets uh, appointed something else. Uh, next item of business, I will uh, make the motion and then have discussion. Resolved, I move uh, resolved effective August 17th, August 18th, 2020, to authorize Mike D'Amato, zoning agent, to execute the notice of grant award for the affordable housing plan grant technical assistance program dated July 1, 2020, to execute amendments, revisions, and revisions hereto, to implement project activities if approved, and to act as the authorized representative of the town of Willington, and to, is that, is that right, Robin? To executive any, uh, I'm, sorry, I'm sure it's ex execute any other agreement or contract relative to said project. That's my motion. Second. Seconded by Liza. So um, I will say in March, we adopted um, a resolution to apply for a grant to develop the affordable housing plan. So this is we had to develop the plan and they had a mechanism in place where we could get a grant to actually cover the cost. Correct, Mike? Yep. Yeah. Um, and so we were awarded that grant and now the grant requires that we appoint an administrator. Um, I met with Mike and he has agreed to assume the role in his uh, capacity as a Willington zoning agent. And you have a mem draft of his memo saying as such. Any other discussion? All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Alrighty, we have three tax refunds tonight. I will move to refund VW Credit Leasing LTD, a certificate of correction in the amount of $299.30. Second. 
Is there a second? Seconded by John. Is, is that correct, John? I saw you raise your hand. Yes. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. I move to award VW Credit Leasing LTD a certificate of correction in the amount of $326.59. I'll second. Eliza, I'll give you that second. Don't all jump at one. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any, oh, motion carries unanimously. And last, I move to uh, refund Suzanne Morris a certificate of correction in the amount of $326.89. Second. Seconded by Liza. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. All right. Um, I'll give you a little storm update. Please feel free to jump in and ask any questions. Otherwise, I'm, you're going to have to listen to me talk. Um, so storm I, that's what I'm calling it now, <laughs> given up saying his name, Isaias, Isaias, I believe. Um, the storm hit on Tuesday, August 4th, about 2 p.m. Um, it didn't um, stick around as long as um, originally forecast. It was a, a quick moving storm. And by about 5 p.m., the bulk of the damage to our town was done. Um, and there was significant damage at that. Um, many of the crews who came into town, I heard uh, referred to as carnage. Um, I hope that you weren't out and about in town, um, but if you were in your areas, you, you certainly saw lots of damage. Uh, again, it was a quick moving storm. And while we were prepared, our public utility Eversource was not. Uh, we sustained close to 80 events on 41 roads in town. The EOC was opened on Tuesday and closed officially on Monday afternoon when almost all of our residents were restored power to their homes and businesses. We had a liaison from Eversource, as we typically do, available to us uh, in the EOC, but due to COVID, they weren't in person, which is what we're used to. And uh, our liaison this time was not a liaison who's been with us in the past. Um, we worked working alongside um, our emergency management director, public works director, and staff at our EMS. Um, we followed the plan put in place for response developed after the 2011 storms, and it quickly became evident that Eversource was not re re prepared to respond in the manner we expected or deserved. It was four days before any real response from Eversource began in Wellington. Um, I can tell you in those four days, um, there were lots of phone calls. There was lots of discussion. Um, there was plenty of um, strong words uh, and, and angry phone calls with our, both the Eversource rep, his uh, leader, unit leader, um, and any government official that I could get to pick up the phone. Um, so until then, our public works um, worked tirelessly to clear the roads of debris that did not involve wires of any type. That's important to know. They cleared what they could, and that left still many areas um, of road blockage, whether they be partially or fully blocked roads, because they involved wires. Regardless of if the power is out on the entire street, our crews um, will not touch anything that involves wires. I can't stress that enough. On Saturday, that uh, public works crew worked as part of a make safe crew to clear those remaining events that involved wires. During the duration, um, our EMS public works continually monitored the areas um, around town that involved road blockages, trees, wires down. Um, when it became evident that Eversource wasn't coming for days, it was important that we be out there and continually monitor those to make sure safety um, was at the forefront, that things were still marked, blocked, um, and, and that residents knew to stay clear of those areas. Um, there were some pretty dangerous spots. Um, that's when we began to see res restoration results on, on Saturday. Our EOC worked diligently to keep our residents safe, informed, and working, working uh, with Eversource to get the proper response here in Willington and hold them accountable. We did not take lightly the lack of response and never stopped demanding uh, better from them. We opened a storm center at Hall School that offered water and charging of electronic devices um, that ended on Monday. 
evening. And then uh, on Tuesday, it was only as needed. We had uh, maybe one or two families that had to take advantage at that point. Uh, the storm showed us one again, once again that our utility partner Eversource has not taken the feedback and planning that came out of previous storms. Um, we, they gave us a playbook. They worked with municipalities after that to develop that playbook. Um, and then I, I feel like they threw it up in the air, um, picked the page that worked best for them at the time. Um, and it, it, it could have resulted in uh, devastating effects. We were very fortunate not um, to have any loss of uh, life here in Willington and um, certainly at no credit to Eversource. Our, um, we did feel the loss of not having a CERT team though. The CERT team um, was started after the 2011 storm. Um, the individual who led the storm team moved out of, CERT team moved out of Willington and things kind of um, stopped. So we really need to work on revitalizing that and bringing that back because those resources are critical, certainly at a time like this. Um, our human services department was integral in helping us meet volunteer needs because of that. We even, I worked with uh, the town manager in Vernon. They have a large CERT team and were able to give us some volunteers. Because of COVID, people are hesitant to come out. I think we're all uh, aware of that. Um, they have about a hundred person CERT team and even their numbers are smaller in need, um, but some of their residents uh, um, came out and helped staff our um, storm center. So I appreciate their willingness to work with us on that. Um, so with, with that help we operated, uh, with human services, we operated the storm center and um, helped to check on some of our vulnerable residents um, to check on their health and safety. Our EMS partners worked to monitor affected roads and assist in, uh, assisted with residents' needs. Um, I wanna thank all of our residents who looked in on their neighbors and, and helped keep each other informed. A lack of power is, is certainly makes things difficult. Social media came into play just to be able to keep people um, aware of what was available and, and where it was dangerous to be. And in those early hours of the storm, how someone could get home from A to B because you might have had to take you know, four or even five different routes than you were used to taking. So it became uh, a difficult to say the least. Um, okay, so there is one area that I, I wanna discuss and I need um, your help and our residents help with this one. So our staff in EMS worked, I can't say how hard they worked, um, marking areas of concern with cones, signs, and in some instances, caution tape when we ran out of other measures. Um, with that number of um, events, as you can imagine, orange cones were in high demand. Uh, road close signs were in high demand and we utilized what we had, um, ran out at some when an area was cleaned, we moved them to other areas. But we had some instances when trees and wires were cut and moved and handled by residents. It's just, I can't, I can't say enough how dangerous that is. Again, we're fortunate no one was hurt. Our public works crew and our EMS staff will not touch um, anything involved with wires for basic safety reasons. This is how people um, lose their life and um, can get seriously hurt. So I'm asking our residents to do the same. We, 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 we say the same things, you hear it on the news, you hear it from all of your officials that if you see down trees and wires, stay clear of them. Encourage uh, your neighbors to do the same. We, we did our best to get to everything we can't, could in a timely manner and make every road at least passable to one lane. Um, but the danger there, just because the power's off doesn't mean there couldn't have been something flowing through some of those lines. Um, every down tree, low wire should be avoided and not touched your safety. Um, is at the forefront of the work we do and taking these dangerous steps for whatever reason should not be done. Also, we had multiple areas uh, where materials to mark the roads were either moved or stolen. Stolen. Um, discouraging to say the least. It's, it's our taxpayer dollars that, that pay for these items. Um, and I'm not sure in the midst of a storm like that, what other uh, pertinent need um, someone had for, for cones that were blocking an unsafe area. So, you know, redirecting detour signs to a dead end road could have resulted in an unnecessary accident um, on both that new detour and, and where the detour was originally put. So 
Um, I asked people to respect the markings and know they were there um, for clear reasons. And I can't stress enough, I'm gonna say it again, if we have downed wires of any kind, they should be avoided. Do you either, excuse me, do either of you have any questions? Comments? Just that there's one cone still sitting on my road here. I'll drop it off at the uh, ah. at the town office building tomorrow. You might want to have a place for, in case stuff has been left out there, you might want to have a place for people to drop that off. We'll, we'll take it. I, I wonder I if it's one of ours or it's one left behind by the other. Uh, it's it's a cone. I don't know yeah. if it's <laughs> or ever source or whoever, but it's there. And there's keepers, John. Here's now. Um, I think, uh, you know, one of the things I wanted to say was that I think um, there are a couple of things that, you know, we had done in response, and by we, I kind of mean the emergency team. Um, I think the Facebook Live um, feed went very well and gave a chance for people to sort of see what people don't normally see when there's something going on in town. Um, I think we should do more of that um, when things are going on or just like, on occasion um, so you know folks can see sort of what what it looks like behind the scenes because I know a lot of times especially when there's emergencies or crises nobody's in the room oh I'm gonna quote Hamilton right now so you know I will attribute this yeah but nobody's in the room where it happens so it's, it's easy to assume that nothing's happening. So um, I think having Facebook Live events and you know in other ways um, to sort of insta live, all yeah. of those things to sort of so I'm not let so people see on things insta, as they're happening. Insta Live, Liza. I, I did um, get the wild idea that let's go Facebook Live so we could take questions from residents and specifically at that time because there was no um, response from Eversource. So I know people had lots of questions about what to do. We wanted to hear from them if there was something that we didn't see, if something um, came down in the time we weren't in your area, in between, you know, after the storm, uh, the storm could have weakened something and brought trees down. So our residents were great in giving us feedback there and sharing with us things we didn't know. Um, I went way out of my comfort zone. And I think everyone that was sitting in that room um, can tell you as soon as it was over how I expressed how I was way out of my comfort zone. Um, but I, what I enjoyed was being able to answer their questions in a real time fashion that then um, people could go back and have a record um, and rewatch. The tough part of that for us was that um, the longer we had no power, the um, more difficulty we had was cell service. So that was a challenge I think we hadn't anticipated. What we have discovered is Verizon has generators on most of their cell sites, um, AT&T not so much. Um, and your first select woman has AT&T service. So when I tried to go live again, um, when we made a pit stop at Public Works, I asked her if we'd stay there, I'd do my live there. So we weren't moving, thinking I had service and it kept going in and out. So um, yes, to, to some questions I could make videos after, but right there for me, it was important to be able to answer some of the questions and it got harder to go back and answer them after without staff. But I think we should keep um, doing that and finding different ways um, to go out there and communicate with folks. And, and I think when they see and hear from us instead of just the written word, I think it makes a big difference. Um, I think that, you know, we would, you know, in other, in other times, you know, there would be a lot of information sharing at the transfer station, yeah. at, you know, in the hallway, in the schools, you know, and we don't have that as much right now. And so I think um, even just if, you know, the Board of Selectmen wanted to do an open house kind of thing where it was just an opportunity for, I mean, I know we have our meetings, but, you know, something that's less formal, um, you know, an opportunity for, for folks to just ask us random questions that pop in their head. Yeah, and some, you know, someone to answer them while we're um, taking, talking is helpful. So I, I want to thank all those that were um, at the EOC and, you know, on their phones answering the questions <coughs> coming in. We had multiple staff members um, step up and, and fill a gap wherever it was. So, um, you know, kudos to both our staff and our residents, you know, with the exception of those big concerns I have. Don't, please don't take all of our signage. They're there for a reason. And please don't touch down trees and wires. Um, it gives us more to worry about. Um, 
And, uh, you know, we want to make sure everyone out there is safe. So this was met with much frustration and, and we're, you know, still having conversations, broader conversations about what will come out of this from Eversource. Um, and, and while I remain hopeful, we've been down this road before. My predecessors have been down this road and sat with them. They sat with municipal leaders. They developed the protocols we put in place and um, the priorities in, in which um, incidents and events fall and how they're handled. And we had a solid plan on Tuesday when we spoke with our uh, liaison and by Wednesday morning, it just didn't happen. It didn't exist. And there were crews. There weren't enough by any means. Um, but if you had, they reported to us early on that they had 350 Eversource crews and about 250 um, tree crews. And my response was every town was hard, hard hit. We were almost 70% out um, at the height of the storm. Why at the very least did every town not get one make safe crew? That's uh, an Eversource lineman and a tree crew to cut through those trees and wires and clear roads that they were passable. Um, and they really didn't have an answer for that. So uh, again, our rural community, I think we saw as a whole, um, the north uh, east corner, while we came on quickly, once they started working, there was significant process, progress in towns west of us um, in larger towns. So um, angry is an understatement to say the least. So yeah, I think we should look at other ways we can communicate. It was very helpful um, and, and it was good to be able to talk to folks and, and give them accurate information. And, and they, again, they shared with us. They let us know if something changed on their road um, as well. So, um, and I wanna give a shout out to our public works um, staff and EMS workers who um, stayed out with me uh, until late one night I, don't, I didn't have confidence when they said they were coming to block a road that was blocking about 2,200 residents um, in a dead end and had no way out. I didn't have confidence when they said they were going to come in and do the work that they were going to. So we stayed there and watched them um, cut the lines, cut the power, cut the tree, and then our public works um, staff member moved it out of the way and, um, and then went on to one more road that was completely blocked. We had two dead end roads that were completely blocked until I believe it was Thursday, Wednesday night into Thursday. And that's just unacceptable, um, dangerous and, and unacceptable. So um, again, thank you for all their hard work. All right, COVID, because we're still in a pandemic on top of all of this. So that made things even more challenging. Um, we did, I, I, I know I said we opened the EOC. Um, unlike other things, we did meet in person and we did use COVID protocols um, during the storm too, but we did meet in, uh, in person. So COVID update, Willington has uh, still just 16 COVID positive cases. Again, that's a cumulative amount with zero probable cases that we're aware of. 16 we've been at for a couple, maybe two weeks now. We can have two weeks. Um, I, I do have concern for the potential for increase as UConn students return. We know of some uh, students, I believe there are five confirmed on-campus students and three commuter students. Um, and so and that's just since Friday when they came back. So I, I certainly have some concerns about what that will look like. None of them were reported um, as Willington residents as of now, um, the commuter. So we'll, we're keeping an eye on that to see if we need to take any, um, any additional precautions. The town office building is still close to the overall general, overall public and we are taking um, appointments as needed that still seems to be meeting our needs. We can see that it got us through tax season. Um, it worked for the primary. The day of the primary, which was last week, we, um, I had the staff that was not directly involved and our um, finance staff who asked if they could work in the office and they stayed in their office. Um, everyone else worked from home on that day. Um, so as to, uh, look, we haven't had people here in a long time. We know on a normal, election day, people like to mosey between offices and visit. Um, and we really wanted to keep things in and out of the poll room and as safe as possible. So um, staff worked from home. I am looking to um, purchase and install a ring style doorbell for the front door to um, allow for a more efficient process when folks come in so that we know where they're going, 
um, right now is whoever hears the door gets up to go um, get the door. And so it, it's certainly not the most efficient way. So I'm looking into purchasing that. Um, and we're beginning to implement a new contact tracing um, here at the TOB. So when you arrive, an individual arrives, they'd be asked a series of questions related to COVID health screening. Have they traveled to any of the air affected areas that are on the governor's list? Um, do they have any of the symptoms? Have they been in contact uh, with anyone with those symptoms? Similar to questions you'd be asked when you um, go to other places, your doctor's office, et cetera. So we'll be um, working on that. And we are continuing um, still with meetings in this manner um, until further notice. Questions, comments, nothing? Okay, well, listen, that's uh, all I got. It brings us to present to speak. So again, those folks that are um, on the video, if you would unmute yourself, you can identify yourself for the record and limit yourself to two minutes. You can click on the participants tab and raise your hand that way as well. If anyone would like the opportunity to speak. Going once, going twice. Okay. A quiet crowd tonight. Um, good and welfare. I've got a couple of items. Um, I sent out a message um, during the storm to broadcast our storm center so that there was water and charging available. I'm happy to report, and um, this is also something for the, our first task force meeting. It was broadcast to 4,063 contacts. Back at the beginning of COVID, when I broadcast the COVID, first COVID mes message, that went out to 2,899 contacts. So throughout um, the time between then, uh, you know, the concerns that were brought up in May and now, we have um, gained a little over uh, maybe 1,200 more contacts who are getting um, updates through that Everbridge system. So that's positive and, and reaching more folks. Um, also, there was um, what appeared to be an uptick in burglaries, um, larceny, stolen vehicles during um, the, the power outage. So I had reached out, starting to see these reports and, and hear some concerns, I reached out to Troop C and asked him if he um, could tell me if there was really an increase. Um, the, the reality is in reported cases, there wasn't an increase. That doesn't mean there was an activity but it does mean that folks may not be reporting it. And if they don't report it and just put it out on social media, it's hard to track those things from the police standpoint. And while you may feel like they're not, you're not gonna get your belongings back or it's not gonna do anything, um, it is possible for things to be returned, but it is also possible for us to gain information. Specifically when I say, we got a real uptick in, in break-ins, um, car thefts, things stolen out of cars, and the reportable matters, they're really not. Um, so make sure that people report them. And I'm gonna sound like a broken record. Take all of your belongings out of your cars and lock your cars um, at night. We, we can't, um, I can't mention that enough. Troop C is gonna begin um, kind of a campaign to start regularly putting out some social media awareness of that. Like, hey, it's you know nine o'clock, is your car locked? You know, Is your purse out of your car kind of thing. And so we'll share those things just to remind people so that we get in the habit um, of doing those things. So if something occurs, I encourage a residents to report those matters, no matter how small. And I think even, even uh, you know, I've seen a lot on social media, I've seen a lot of people posting um, like the doorbell or security video of people coming to their driveway and mm -hmm. checking their car, but not opening it and then running away and leaving. Those right. things need to get reported as well. Cause yeah. all of that, you know, even though they had tried and failed, it still was a criminal, it was an attempted criminal act. And all of that stuff needs to get reported, sent to the police so that, um, I mean, it helps with descriptions. It helps with, you know, knowing locations and timing of, um, you know, when these um, events are happening. So um, even if, they didn't succeed in breaking into your car, you still have the video footage, you know, please send that on to the police as well. 
couldn't agree more. Um, I have our July report from Troop C. There were a total of 383 calls for service. In July, there were eight accidents, 11 criminal investigations, one burglary, three larcenies, and 292 non-reportable matters, and six arrests. There were, uh, as far as motor vehicle enforcement, there were 70 total traffic stops, one on-site DUI, zero arrests, four misdemeanor summons, 38 infractions, nine written warnings, and 20 verbal warnings. Again, those are um, on town roads and state roads that include the highway. Um, I, this storm showed us that once again, uh, what we saw is that we are, um, our new phrase out here is Willington Strong. Um, as a tight-knit community, we, get, we can get through the tough times and, and 2020 is certainly uh, testing us on that. Um, but um, stay Willington strong and, and, and stay together and check on your friends and neighbors. And, and I want to um, last acknowledge um, one of our uh, younger residents, uh, Austin Kaziki, a young man um, who suffered from uh, kidney disease, recently received a life-saving kidney donation. Um, and is on the mend. Um, and I know it was a gift that his uh, family could never thank the donor enough for. So we're happy to hear after um, uh, a strong campaign by mom, she put a, a billboard up uh, on the highway. Um, it went um, statewide and a donor saw it and eventually was tested and came forward. So I'm sure there were others who may have been tested or, or thought about it. Um, so I just want to congratulate the Kaziki family um, on their um, good news and continued good health for Austin. Do either of you have anything for good and welfare? Yes, John. I'm just going, <clears throat> I'm just going to jump back here for a minute and express my disappointment. I had sent an uh, email requesting that the library be uh, issue be put on tonight's agenda and it was not. So I'm now going to request that it be put on our next agenda. And if there's nothing to discuss at that time, it will still be on the agenda, but we still will be able to discuss it. Okay, I, I mean, at this point, the, the discussion is a matter of, uh, for the library board, we don't, um, they are taking steps. Um, and there's really not much for us to discuss. And I wanted to see the library board who the letter was also sent to, um, sent to the library board chair, um, address them the concerns and they did. So we can certainly put it on our agenda, but I don't know that um, currently there's anything for us um, to discuss. The library board um, handles those issues currently and they have taken uh, steps to do so as far as um, possible uh, litigation, so. My guess is by the time our next meeting comes around, there won't be anything to discuss because it will be a legal matter. If it is, in, if it is a legal matter, that's mm -hmm. at that time, it's true, but yeah. I still would like to see it on the, the board met uh, and agreed and, and moved. And I know the um, chair has reached out uh, to the attorney as um, moved by that board. So this, this is now, there, there is discussions with an attorney at this point. Um, and again, I, I can't stress enough that the matters um, stem right now with the library board of directors. If no action was taken, then this board could certainly have a discussion, um, but we can put it on our next agenda, which will be Tuesday, September 8th. The first Monday uh, of September is Labor Day. So we will meet on Tuesday, September 8th. Anything else? No. All right, with that, I will make a motion to adjourn it. 714. Seconded by Liza. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Have a good evening, folks. <laughs>